common pediatric elbow fractures. Pediatric elbow fractures can include the subracondylar fractures of the humerus and also pediatric elbow fractures that involve the ossification centers. I had several videos on subracondylar fractures of the humerus and in this video I'm going to be talking about pediatric elbow fractures involving the ossification centers. The reality is diagnosing and managing elbow fractures in a child can be challenging. The most common injuries of the ossification centers of the elbow include Transepiphyseal separation of the distal humerus, lateral condyle fracture, medial epicondyle fracture, fracture of the radial head or fracture of the radial neck. Transepiphyseal separation of the distal humerus, you got to suspect child abuse in this injury. It is usually confused with elbow dislocation. However, in elbow dislocation, the olecranon moves posteriorly and laterally. In transepiphyseal separation, the olecranon moves posteriorly and medially. The child is too young to have an elbow dislocation. One important key here is the radiocapitella line remains the same. It's not interrupted. So if the radiocapitella line shows that the capitellum and the radial head are aligned, then this is not an elbow dislocation. It is a transepiphyseal separation. The diagnosis is usually difficult and can be missed, and it should be highly suspected with elbow injuries before the age of one year. Understanding when the ossification centers appear around the elbow is important. Use the mnemonic cry toe one three five seven nine eleven. Capitillum at one year, the radial head at three years. The internal epicondyle, which is the medial epicondyle, at 5 years. Trochlea, at 7 years. Olecranon, at 9 years. External epicondyle, at 11 years. Lateral condylar fracture. It is an important fracture. They are usually Salter Harris type 4 fractures. If the fracture appears non displaced, then you need to get an internal rotation oblique view of the elbow. It will show you the amount of displacement of the fracture. If you decide to treat this non displaced fracture conservatively, then you need to have close follow up with repeat x rays at short intervals to make sure that the fracture does not displace. It is a joint injury. The majority of the fracture will appear displaced and surgery should be done with a lateral approach and not a posterior approach. The posterior approach will compromise the blood supply of the capitellum and can cause vascular necrosis. What are the complications of lateral condylar fractures? Non-union, which can give you cubitus valgus. It happens because the medial part of the elbow will grow more than the lateral part that's injured, and the elbow will be in valgus. The under nerve symptoms, it takes years to develop under nerve symptoms because the under nerve gets stretched by the cubitus valgus. If the non-union occurs and the patient has good motion of the elbow but complains of pain, then he would do bone graft and fixation. 
And if there is associated ulnar nerve symptoms, then you need to release or transpose the ulnar nerve. The lateral condylar fracture of the humerus is a surgical case, no question about it. Now we go to the medial epicondyle fracture. The medial epicondyle growth plate is the last one to fuse. The fracture of the medial epicondyle is usually treated conservatively. However, if the displacement is more than a centimeter, then the surgeon may decide to do surgery. The amount of displacement that requires surgery is controversial. The medial epicondyle fracture is commonly associated with dislocation of the elbow. Look for medial epicondyle in the post-reduction x-rays. If the medial epicondyle fragment becomes trapped within the joint, then it needs to be removed and fixed. Radial head and neck fractures. Conservative treatment should be done when there is less than 30 degrees of angulation or 30 degrees of displacement. Close reduction is done if displacement is more than 30 degrees. Percutaneous pen may be used for reduction as a joystick. Open reduction is done if there is more than 45 degrees of residual angulation after failure of close reduction or percutaneous joystick method. There are complications from open reduction, such as synestosis, fusion of the radius to the anna. The reflected periosteum is a possible cause of the synestosis. Other complications from open reduction can also occur, such as osteonecrosis due to interruption of the blood supply of the radial head. Loss of motion of the elbow is another complication. Non-union of the radial neck fracture is rare. Interposition of the periosteum is a possible cause of the non-union. Radial head fracture may be associated with compartment syndrome. Watch for the development of compartment syndrome in a child with radial head fracture. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.